testing, 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 testing. I hate seeing the word testing over and over again. Uh, and I don't know when the stream's going to come on, so it's on now. Um, I guess I sort of uh, have to apologize to MZ Plays, who I was hosting, uh, but I am slightly, well, I'm not more important than you, but uh, I got a stream. Man's got a stream, you know, man. All right, um, last time we were uh, working with uh, Mathix, and uh, it sucks. It's written in Python, it's an abandoned program, uh, and it's a very poor implementation of the Wolfram library. It's very deeply not supported everywhere. And that, that sentence was, never mind. Um, but it sucks, basically that's, that's the bottom line. So today we're going to continue using it, of course, because uh, as, as the, my entire stream is sort of about this, uh, you know, really exploring the suckiness of technology. Um, so there's two things we're going to try today, and at first, and then if we have time, we'll move on to the, uh, we'll return to the uh, problem of Jovian lunar eclipses, which we're trying to solve with Mathix. Um, because, and if I guess if uh, you want a real reason as to why we're using Mathix, it actually is pretty good in terms of the command line uh, use of Mathix, and it does have some of the better matrix and linear algebra functions uh, that I like and that are actually fairly useful. It's just the graphics are unusually poor and you need a web browser to run them. And so what I want to do uh, is look at sort of how Mathix creates images that can uh, be saved to disk. And then I don't think Mathix has a run through command that lets you run other programs uh, you know, that from the OS, but there might be a way around that. So, so if we can uh, actually put everything into Mathix, cut and paste it at the command line and get images to pop up, that might be a, a, a good enough replacement uh, for the Mathix web interface. Uh, then again, it might not be. Now, one thing I was thinking is Mathematica has a lot of libraries, uh, plus some of Mathematica is actually written in Mathematica itself, which means if, you, if Mathix supports some core of Mathematica, which it doesn't, but if some portion of that core, and there is a library written in Mathematica that only uses that portion of the core, we can use those libraries in Mathix. However, and I'm sort of doing that with my own, uh, you know, creating my own library that's a sub-library of the Mathematica library that I have, which is not very big. But the first thing I want to see, are there actually other Mathix libraries out there? It might be that someone has solved a lot of these problems, um, so we don't have to. And I'll make a note here before I forget. Um, I might, probably, I mean, I will, but it, they're not going to like it. I might submit some of my library, the one library that has one function right now, but, you know, if I sort of get this all collected together, I might submit my uh, stuff to the Mathix uh, GitHub, and um, even though the, pro the project is, is pretty much dead, I actually posted an issue and no response. Um, and my issue, I was just saying, basically, if Mathix, I mean, there, there are known Mathematica keywords, uh, so if Mathix could just, you know, if it's going to decide not to implement a function, it could at the very least say this function is not implemented instead of just kind of ignoring the fact that it even exists. Um, especially if you're trying to use it with Mathematica code, it would be very nice to have this sort of pop-up, not pop-up, I mean print out, you know, uh, function exists in Mathematica but not supported in Mathix. Ver be very nice. Um, so if I do find anything, I, I'm, you know, I might try to push it there, maybe Mathix with these libraries. I don't think it'll re, you know, it'll reincarnate the project. I guess resurrect is the good word for today, even though I don't celebrate this holiday. Uh, and I realize it's, it's his birthday, not his resurrection, which is actually on Easter, uh, assuming he exists, and, and it's actually the anniversary. Well, well we're not going to get into that. But anyway, if, I don't think it'll actually re resurrect math math Mathix. Um, but it might help people who are using it a little bit more, and who knows, maybe if there's enough effort, we can get that pushed back in. The uh, better solution, of course, would be to convince uh, Stephen Wolfram. Uh, it is Christmas today, Stephen, and I know you don't watch my... I don't think you watch... I don't know who the hell you are, actually. Um, if today would be a great day to give everyone a Christmas gift by making Mathematica open source and becoming a support-modeled company. Uh, it would also be a great day for lots of other good things to happen to me that won't be happening to me today. So just FYI there. All right. So the first thing I'm going to look for is see, do you have people written libraries for Mathix that might be helpful? I'm going to guess that the answer to this is no, actually. Um, I get the feeling that it was abandoned too quickly. And I'm going to be careful here because it's going to give me, yep, I knew it was going to do that. Um, mathematics library. Got to be very careful here. Mathix is, let's see if I can do this. This probably won't work either. 
open source mathematical compatible um, get the bleeding. I'm pretty sure these are the um, oh wow there's a mathics 1.0 let's see what version we're using oh uh, we are using 1.0 okay um, and if there's one beyond it I'm not sure I want to get it yet uh, so let's see what this does this is um, this is actually just a page about it, and I don't think the word light. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, it uses the Python symbolic library, um, <laughs> which is different from being a library for Mathix itself. So let's do this, um, which doesn't help. Add, okay. Is there an open? Yep. Um, the library world. Of course, the other problem with Mathix is it's not really written from scratch to, to interpret the Wolfram language. It's actually written on top of something called SymPy or other symbolic libraries that Python has. It's more of a, it's more of a GUI, well, not a GUI, but it's more of a transformation. Uh, I guess it is a GUI. It's, well, it's a UI. It's a user interface to SymPy that looks like Mathematica. Again, a good reason not to really use it. And that has nothing to do whether I'm going to use it or not. So let's see if we have it. Um, two other libraries, but again, this is talking about Python libraries, not Mathix libraries. And I think one of the problems here is going to be, um, it's going to be very, very hard to, um, this is one of those Google searches that is pretty hard to do, I think, actually. Um, Now, I mean, we might be able to kind of cheat and say free mathematical. Like, there's tons of these. Uh, the problem is not all of them are going to be Mathix compatible because Mathix doesn't um, doesn't interpret all of the Wolfram language. Um, must include free. Yes, must. Uh, and, and there's Wolfram Open Code. Wolfram is actually pretty good about when it comes to expand extending Mathematica. They're they're not they're pretty good about being open source there. Uh, they're not pretty good about being open source with the co their code itself. Um, for three decades, blah blah blah. De democratization, no, by providing outstanding. F yeah, they just they're lying. I mean, if they were really a leader, they would open source their own code. But they do provide free resources, which is not which is not too bad. Um, so the Wolfram Function Lib Repository, publicly available standalone. Um, rep ooh. Whoa, hello. There's a lot of good stuff here. Um, so if anyone ever wants to resurrect uh, Mathix, this might be the way to go. And I would include this in the Mathix distribution. Um, so let's see if there's anything here that will help. Probably not. I, mean, I like geographic data and computation, machine learning, strings and text. Uh, visualization and graphics. This is where we're having the sort of problem uh, with uh, not having a lot of good visualization and graphics functions, uh, especially not ones we can write to disk and look at with Unix tools. We have to run the web browser. We have to run the server. We have to, you know, we have to do all of this sort of extra work on top of it. Um, this is some good stuff. Now the question is, is this stuff all written in... Um, is this stuff all ooh, shiny? Um, is this stuff all written in Mathematica so it can be used by Mathix? And the answer is I don't care, um, because it does look like we're not going to find any Mathix libraries. Um, so the next thing we want to look at is math math your mama. Um, I just said your mama. Yes. Um, okay. So the other thing we want to look at is um, Mathix has an image type. I think. I mean, really, I have no idea. Um, and so we should be able to create images from the command line and save them as a file. And then somehow be able to display that, like using XV or Fe or display from Image Magic or something else. Um, I prefer Fe. I don't think I have it installed here. Uh, Fe does. Oh, well, okay. I don't have it installed. That's just. That's a hell of a. Wow. Yeah, I don't have Fey installed. I have it alias to something, but that, uh, which lets me annotate. It's actually a pretty good alias. Um, I don't think Fey will install from a uh, package manager, 
And I don't want to spend too much time installing extra packages on this uh, VM that's designed for sharing because we can look at pictures with XV. Faye is sort of a little bit, bit of a bonus there that we don't need. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create in Mathix. And by the way, I, put, I think I mentioned this before. I put BC in front of everything because I'm pretending that I'm trying to avoid namespace conflicts with someone else who wants to name something. Uh, really, it's just, it's just uh, arrogance, extreme arrogance on my part. So BC graphics testing dot mathix. Alrighty. So now we're going to look at, uh, we still have this up. We're going to look at images in, in mathix. I mean, I think before we go here, because I, I want to show how smart I am, um, in JavaScript, images are actually, I think, ultimately just an array of values which are read four at a time to give you the RGB and opacity values for a pixel. And basically, you know, you can shape that, however that image is shaped, they get filled in correctly, but the actual image data, at image data, not the image, is really just a single non-nested array. It's a one-dimensional array. And I think a Mathix does something similar to that. I think that's how they, they, they view image uh, they view images as. So, uh, clearly we're not going to get there anytime quickly with this, so let's see. Control, differential, evaluation, exponential, functional, graphics, shiny. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just very try to make a very basic uh, image which doesn't exist. So you know, th that'll make it a little bit trickier. Creating images when images don't exist. Um, Okay, so this is how we create a graphics 2D object. We've done that before. Um, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh, 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 yep. All right, so these are all image sizes. Let's see if we have an image uh, bracket. Oh, we do. Oh. Oh, okay. So it appears that it has its own section, which... Um, This is really good stuff, I think. I think we've actually found, um, let's see if it's actually listed here before I, before I whine. Okay, so everyone remember what page we're on. We're on page uh, 129. I think, oh no, sorry, it's right there. So what's nice is if you go to graphics, you don't see anything about image because of course images aren't graphics according to these guys. But image does have its own section, which I've got to admit is kind of nice. I mean, it, it is sort of exactly what we want. So binarize will take a uh, binarized vision of image. I wonder if I can load images. Um, I don't really have any, but I think we can get some. I mean, uh, let's see. How do we load image data? This is this might be actually supported fairly well. I mean, they have the functions listed as though it's supported fairly well. Um, let's see. How do I import an image? Image, 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 image. Image import. Ooh. Shiny. Oh, they, we have example data. Let's see if we can find our example data. Um, yeah, the problem is I don't have BC rev search working properly. On It's installed, it's not, it's not working properly. Um, let's be... This is really not the correct way to do things. It's going to be too slow. And I don't have locate installed either, but let's see what example data is. That sounds like a fun thing to have. What the hell? Oh. That is the strangest thing in the world. And I think it's because bcgit is a, is a mount. I don't know why it doesn't let me look at it. Oh, my user 1000 doc might be a, a virtual directory. It's not really there, but it's like the proc directories where you can pretend it is. Okay, um, I don't think I have note alias here. No. Um, for right now, I'm going to use doing for this, although I should not be using doing for this. This is a different thing. Uh, this is just so we... is where Mathix keeps its example data. Shiny. Um, let's see what the hell's in there. Um, blood toil set. What the hell? See, now I've got to read. I think it's a speech by somebody. Um. Oh, this might be the blood toils. Uh, some British guy speech. So let's see what we if we have xv dot gif. There's the mad tea party. By the way, um, to the guy who wrote xv. 
um, billions of years ago, it still says unregistered. And I realize you can still register it, but for God's sake, dude, give it up. This is public domain. You know it's public domain, freaking make it public domain. Okay, just wanted to rant at him for a little bit. Let's see if there's a color image here. That's Einstein. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Well, they're sunflowers, actually. Um, testosterone. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. They even have, like, freaking, freaking tiffs. <whistles> hubba hubba. And even more hubba coming up. Okay, I thought this was a full moon picture. Um, not like that. All right, why don't we do, and I think, actually, XYZ is, a, is an image format. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, it's definitely not. That's the, uh, that's how benzene is something, something, something. All right, all right, we'll use sunflowers.jpg. And we're going to try to be clever here by setting dir, dir, equal to this, because I don't want to keep having to repeat myself there. And then we will do blah. Import dir. And I think Lena's pretty hot. Let's use her. And by the way, the, the, this little thing here is append. Uh, so at least it is in Mathematica. Here it might mean destroy everything on your computer. Uh, you never know. All right, let's see if this works. And I forget if Lena's capitalized or not. Um, oh, Lena. Oh, no, she's not. Oh, and she's a TIFF file. Uh, actually, that's not. Let's do sunflowers.jpg. I don't want to hit TIFF until we have to. Um, I should have started with GIF. It's the simplest one, but I'm kind of going in between and hitting something that's medium, medium interesting. Oh, I don't have MathX running anywhere. Okay. MathX minus minus persist tilde bc git MathX blah, blah, blah. Graphics testing. Well, that didn't really do anything, did it, now? And I maybe, maybe, maybe... Oh, let's see if Dur got assigned. Yay. Let's see what this does. The problem is I think it doesn't know how to print images. Oh, cool! So... So I could have assigned something to it, I guess, is the... I should have probably done that. In fact, let me do that here. Yeah, that was, that was my bad. Okay, so now with M... Well, let's go ahead and assign M equals... Percentage means the last output. Um, the head is just going to say image, yeah. I, this may or may not work. Giving something that's full form... Yeah, it, I, you can... I'm trying to sort of look at the object raw, um, but there's, it's not exact, immediately clear there is a raw... Okay, it's not a list. Um, it's... Um, not exactly, uh, it's not exactly, I don't actually know what the hell it is, I mean, I guess we could actually look at the instructions now and see what we can, can we get like dimensions of image? That would be really cool. No, but of course we can't, unless there's another function, nope, that's it. Alright, let's see what we can do with this image now that we have it. It is sunflowers, they're very shiny and, well, because I guess they're named for the sun. Alright, um, so let's see what we can do with our image. Okay, image data might be something we can do. Uh-oh. It's slowing down. That means it wants to do something really big. Um, it was kind of interesting at first, but now I'm kind of bored of it. Um, I know I'm running on a VM, but Jesus Christ, it shouldn't be this slow. Hang on, let me see what I can do about that. Not much, apparently. Um, on my main machine... What a hell of a lot's running right now. Okay. Not cool. I've either broken it or it's trying to print out a lot of data. So let's stop that. And let's see if we can get the length of image data. That might just be a, a number. Yeah. So. Not cool. Not cool. Um. Yeah, the fact that it can't handle image data is bad because it's a function. It's not a huge image either. Uh, image add. Th I mean, if this works, this would actually be pretty damn cool. Let's see what the dominant colors are in this image. Uh, they probably don't exist either. Yeah. 
gasped. It worked. Okay. That's not. That's actually quite a. Not very many colors. For, oh, those are the dominant colors. Those, those aren't all the colors. Colorize um, values. Uh, oh, this might be what we need here to create a new image. And in theory, colorize will give us pr the same similar thing to what image data will give us, except maybe it'll actually work. I mean, it probably won't. Nope, see, that's not what's supposed to happen. When you give colorize an image, it's supposed to give you a colorized version of the image, uh, which doesn't really help. Okay. There's a pixel in each occurrence of the same number is displayed in the same unique color, which is different from all the colors. Okay, so this is actually not, not too bad. This is a... This is not what we need, but it might let us create an image. So we'll put it up here. Um, colorize. And I kind of want something that repeats itself, but um, for right now, we'll just say I one to a hundred. And I think what's going to bug me here is this image has no dimensions. So I'm wondering how it's going to decide what the dimensions are. Returns an image where each number in the rectangu uh, rectangular matrix. Aha! So they are being a little bit clever. Um, and, you know, another thing might be this is so inefficiently slow that it might not be worth using. This is going to be a 10,000 element matrix. Um, oh, and I'm colorizing it internally. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see if that even works. Okay, we don't need you to say that's that's taking way too long. And of course, I really shouldn't be restarting. I might be able to do it faster by just doing the double arrow. Um, yeah, so the other problem here might be that we just really aren't going to be able to use this because its functions are too, uh, are too slow. So M2 is an image. Um, I really can't do anything except export image here. Image export. Now if this works, this will be the sort of thing we really need to be doing. Then I'm, I'll be happy that we can actually maybe use images to do what we want because we can um, create an image apparently and hopefully there's other ways to do that and export it. And then once we've exported it, God willing, um, oh good, see the image export function has no, um, has, no, um, has no explanation for it. So maybe we can't export images. You know, what the hell? Uh, that might be a, a game changer, not a game changer, a deal breaker. Whatever buzzword is correct there. Export. Um. Wow. And the next thing just jumps all the way to page. Oh my god. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Alright, well I'm going to try it anyway. Mm, it's a JPEG, right? Yeah. It's the test.jog. Oh, cool. So image export doesn't really give a frickin' ass what I put in there. That's brilliant. There is another function called just export, but I think it will break Mathix. Uh, in fact, I'm almost sure it will break Mathix. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that suggests that we can take an image and put it somewhere where we can actually use it. Uh, binarize, box matrix, what does binarize do? Gives a binarized version of an image which e each pixel is either 0 or 1. Okay, so we might be able to do something like, um, I'm hoping the double arrow is, okay, so I'm going to do this, which should put image into image.jpg. It's not going to work. What's going to happen is you're going to have the word image in the, this file, but if that works, we at least have something. Oh, the hell? That's kind of cool. It's wrong, but it's kind of cool. So wait, did I actually just successfully export an image? A JPEG? <laughs> That's... Um, oh, I think Emacs just tries to treat it because it has a JPEG extension. That's what I expect it to be in there, just the word image. But the fact that we can use the double arrow means we might be able to create an image export of our own. Again, complete waste of time because the project is abandoned. It's in Python, which is a sucky language, even though everyone loves it. And there was a third reason I forgot. 
Okay. Gives a bite on each pixel. Okay, so that's not what we really want, but we might be able to um, color combine, color convert, negate, parse. We're looking for something that'll basically spit out the image as an array. Diamond matrix. That just sounds so exciting. I want to see what it gives a diamond shaped color of. Yeah, no. That did sound exciting, but it's not. Um, dominant colors, edge detect, erosion, Gaussian filter, image add, image adjust. Ra -da -da -da. Oh, good. That's also not. Uh, that's not. Uh, I think image channels here. Yeah, that's a. That just means it's uh, RGB. I think. Actually, I don't know, but I, it's not. It's not grayscale. Is what I think that's saying. Um, image channel. There's a lot of stuff you maybe can do with images if 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 any of these functions actually worked. Um, box channels, color space, convolve, image data. Image data. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on, we might have something here. Gives a list of all color values as a matrix. Right on. And I am going to call it text now because we're really not. Um, and we'll wait for it. Uh, we're really not. Uh, this is just going to be a raw matrix. Um, but hey, we might be able to do something with that. Probably not, but I mean, you know. <sighs> yep. The fact that image data is taking forever to spit this out is not a good sign. Uh, we will give it another uh, 12 seconds to live. And I just ma made up 12 because this happened. Oh, wow. This clock's about half a second behind. So at the 30th second, we will kill this. And, um, yep. Okay. So image data, if it works... That would be great. <laughs> that would really be helpful to us. And I get the feeling if image data doesn't work, we're probably not going to have a lot of success in converting this image to something that we can read. However, I'm not ready to give up yet. I will be soon. Dimensions, export, which I we looked at, and there's no, you can't really do anything with it. That is brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Import, multiply, partition. Is it an image? Let's see if it is an image. I mean, it is, but I just want to... I just like using the Q functions. It is an image. Um, reflect, resize, rotate, subtract, take. What does take do? Ooh. Ooh la la. But I think it, it only takes it as an image. So if I did this, I would get the first five rows of image, but only as an image, not as an actual. But maybe now... God damn it, it's only five rows, you piece of crap. Yay, it worked. Um, yeah, unfortunately, if, if it's going to be that um, slow for the whole image, that's five rows it took forever. Dear God. Uh, image take, image type, max median filter, min filter, morphological components. That just sounds like you have to look at it. Ooh. That sounds really exciting. I don't know what the hell it means. Opening. The morphological opening. Okay, yeah. Brilliant. It, this must be really fun if you could use any of these. Pillow image filter. Pixel value. Okay, hang on. Okay. That that might be worthwhile. I mean, we could make a table of this if we... That's not too bad. Um... So we're just going to get the first pixel of, like, the first ten rows. That was pretty quick. I wonder what, the, what size this R image is. Anyway. Um, okay, so that actually took... I don't know if the timing function is, is enabled here. Yeah. I uh, probably should have put a semicolon after that. Seriously? Timing function is supposed to tell you how long something takes um, mathematically to do it. I'm guessing it's actually in there. Um, I'll just call it image.text again. We'll just overwrite it. Okay. 
Oh, I never actually loaded image.txt. Okay, and there it is. The timing says it took two tenths of a second to get 100, um, to get 100 pixels. Uh, that's not great. Um, but let's see if we can, we can pump that up a little bit. Um, so maybe image dimensions is what I needed. Yes! Image dimensions! Yes! Huzzah, huzzah! Okay. I realize what you, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, wait a minute, we just did this and it took too long. Um, yeah, I don't care. Now, I think this is a different way of getting the data from the image using pixel value instead of using image data. It should give the same result, and it should not take forever, but as you can see, it is taking forever. Um, this is not good, and we're going to give up very, very soon here. Um, and we, but there are other ways to do things like this. I mean, there are other programs that will draw graphics from data, uh, tons of them. I was just hoping we could use Mathics to do this, but clearly I'm going to give up on this now. Wow. Okay. Let's see if that changed image.txt. Yeah. Oh, it, it just made it empty, though. Okay. All right. One more time. I, don't th I think we're done. I think we're not going to get anything. We're getting close to the end. Pixel value positions. Give the positions of all that have value val. Yeah, that's not going to be helpful. Random image. Sharpen. Text recognize. Wow. Threshold. Words. Clone. Let's bump this up a little bit. Words cloud. Okay. So is there anything in here? You need scikit image installed. And even then it doesn't work that well. We do have scikit image installed, by the way. Um, so there's really nothing here about, there's no sort of uh, overview of what image does. We just kind of go directly into images. All right, let's take a quick look at graphics, but I'm pretty sure that's broken too. Um, disk edge form, face form, filled curve, font color, graphics, graphics box. We're looking for, I guess we even don't even have an export here. Um, do we even have a way to create an image from a, from a, from a graphics? I mean, that, that should work. Regular polygon. All right, let me try something here. Um, I can create a graphics object pretty easily. That's graphics 2D actually. So this is going to be a circle at zero zero with a radius of one. I I can't draw it, but yay! Now what happens if I take this and put it into temp image? Text. I'm so, so convinced nothing's going to happen. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting, actually. Um, can I take image 2 and convert it into a graphics? Apparently not. Um, I might be able to put it inside of something else, but okay. Um, so let's see, graphics, graphics, graphics. Um, and that doesn't really help. It doesn't draw the image. It just sort of spits out what I put into it. Uh, but let me try something here. The, what's weird here is it, m I expected to just put the, this in there. So the fact that we can, we got something else in there. So G. So now I want to put G into temp image that text, and see if it actually. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what I want to do. Okay, so it does actually put the graphics in there. I don't think that helps us in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Um, but we, there it is. Um, inside, inset box, blah, 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 large, okay, uh, magenta, offset, orange, point, point box, polygon, purple. The color purple is a movie. Um, text, tiny, white, X, Y, Z. Yeah, I don't think any of this is going to... I'll look for the word export in here, but I, I think we're, we're screwed. Because uh, it is an image export, and then, of course, it tells us it's not really defined. And the next one is, like, way the hell out there in a totally different section. Uh, I'm going to go backwards here real quickly. Export the res... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There might be something here. Creation of graphics and dis displays in web browser using SVG and 2D graphics. Export of results to LaTeX. That's not LaTeX, by the way. It's LaTeX. Using asymptote for graphics. 
Um, yeah, this is literally how I feel about it. Um, importing and exporting. Okay. Oh. Exports expression. This, this is going to be so bad. This is going to break mathics, I think. Oh, shiny. Wait a minute. That's not, I, was, I think I meant to say temp image that text. So it didn't break mathics, but let's see what it put in here. And I'm guessing it's not anything useful. I mean, it never is. Yes, please do read, read. Ta-da! That's not useful. So now can we do it as image? Um, this I'm 99% sure is going to break Mathematica. Ooh, interesting. Oh my god. Hang on. Have we, have we done it? Huzzah, huzzah? That looks really ugly. But it is an image. And it may even be the image that I created. Okay. Alright. Alright. So, huzzah, huzzah for export. Now I'm going to try JPEG. It's on my machine I think this actually breaks, but let's see. Oh my god. Oh my darling. Okay, and now, because I really do want to break it, I'm going to try SVG. And that I actually want to read as an XML file, which is what SVG is. Oh, they cheated, bastards. Um, they just did it as a pixelized image, and they just mime 64 encoded it. I was hoping they would actually have the, uh, the various things that get drawn for it. Okay, so we have our first semi-victory here. Um, we can export images. Uh, so that's actually not bad. If we can create an image, we can export it. That's kind of nice. Um, now, I think maybe this is what's going to break it. Um, G is this. I'm pretty sure I can't do this. I'm pretty sure this is going to break. And if it doesn't, I'll be very surprised. That means it'll actually break Mathematica. Only an image can be... Oh, wow. Okay. Now I'm really curious just to see what's an image SVG. Uh, holy crap, dude. Is that actually a SVG file? I mean, this is, it looks like it's even cut off here. That doesn't even... That doesn't even... Um, that's not even proper XML. The fact that it worked at all is, is freaking amazing, but... And I'm almost sure that uh, XV won't display that. Uh, no such file. Okay, well that's not what I meant to do. Image SVG. No decode delegate for this format. And I'm pretty sure because it's not really SVG. Someone just kind of... Yeah, they. someone didn't really export this really well. Okay, okay, but, but this, is, this is kind of good. Um, and I'm sure it won't let me export it as a JPEG or a TIFF. Okay, or TIFF, just to make sure that you know we fail at every possible level. Good, good deal. Okay, but now the question is, can we convert a graphics object into an image object? And I'm almost sure we can't. That's the thing that breaks. So I told you it was going to break. Didn't believe me, did you? Um, so um, that shouldn't really take that long, unless I'm doing something terrible in there. Okay, I'm creating an image of 10,000. Okay. Okay, we might have a say. We, we might have a hail mary here. Um. Yeah, I know you expect me to say something like, uh, "Hail Mary, full of grace." Um. Okay, so image two is an image. And I guess at this point we actually want to create a sort of graphics and, and I mean in a way this sort of makes sense because if you go over here. No, not here. If you're over here, clearly, I mean, clearly you could take a screenshot of this. I mean, that 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 has to happen, be doable. Um, but that's really ugly. I I'm trying to avoid that. So let's see if we can do this. And um, 
And I think you're supposed to say Hail Mary, so give me one second here and we're going to actually say that. This is BC Eclipse Diagram. Um, so let's see here, I think it's G7, yeah it is G7, so let's, I'm just going to make sure G7 is a G7. Alright, now, this is still very, very ugly. Now this isn't going to work, but again, I, I really just want it to fail. And it's not going to break either, nope. But if I do an SVG here, Mother of God, uh, uh, who is, by the way, Hailberry. So brought that one full circle. Let's take a look at an image SVG here. Yes, I do want to read it again. Mother of God. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Image SVG plus XML. Um... Oh, brother. This might actually be... frickin... XML. This might not be, uh, this might not be image data. This might actually be a MIME encode of, um, of actual S, which is, we, which we can kind of deal with because you can convert it to something else, but that's just another step we don't want to really be doing. Okay, so let's do this. MIM decode, or is it, is it now base, yeah, it is base64 minus decode, temp, and I changed it enough to get rid of the little additional crap at the beginning, so it's just MIME. Let's see what, oh, shiny. Okay, so it looks like if I can get this image back somehow, um, we might have a shot at printing out graphics as as images instead of in instead of in the stupid uh, Mathic server, which is so pointless. I I've decided I hate it. Okay. So this is an interesting a little thing about programmers and programming in general. You'll notice that I failed many, many, many times, and really, realistically at this point, anyone with a brain would have quit and tried to find a better tool. If they had not thrown me this bone, I would have stopped. And so in programming, uh, because everyone hates you in the world, you will often find things like this, where at the last minute you found the teeniest, tiniest bit of success that makes you keep going. Now we're going to fail a lot more, find the teeniest bit of success that keeps going. This is not only just about programming, but it's about life, really. Um, just enough encouragement to keep you suffering. Uh, and that is my true belief there, and that is uh, also, I think, uh, the Princess Bride has something about that. But enough about that. So now let's see if we can convert this. Um, I, in, in theory, I could pipeline it, but I'm not going to do that. Image uh, m2.svg. So now we should have that. That's really not good. Invalid in. I like the way that little tick mark doesn't end. I mean, you know, why? Why the hell should? Why the hell should we bother to print the entire? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I might have just needed to return there. Let's try that one more time. And I do have set no clobber set, so I got to do it this way. Um, this is brilliant. It's like, well, we're not going to print the whole image for you. Uh, we're not going to print the whole header for you. We're going to print a little bit of it for you. Um, so I'm pretty sure in order to get this to work, we do need to close off the, the tag. Did I say that to image? I am to SVG. Um, so wait a minute. Oh, this is actually this. Now let's just leave off a few, few characters. Um, now let's see if we can display it. <gasps> uh, uh why are there no text why is there no text on it? Was there there was text on the original, right? Hang on. Oh good, they they've gotten rid of our text. Because you know, that's just a little tiny thing to fuck with. Alright, let me see if it actually has it in the in the XML and we're just not printing it correctly. Oh there it is, math M text. For an object. Woohoo! Um so they will do it, but I mean, um, they're going to treat it as something that that's not going to be converted into actual uh, a text element. And I'm wondering if we can fix that too. I mean, we're really kind of reaching for the stars here. Um, damn. So this is 
this is really in some sense the worst possible situation we could with a lot of work get it to work so we can't give up on it um, actually let's see if there's a better export format for this text and I'm almost sure that this is not going to give us what we want I mean it'll export but it's just going to give us the raw what the hell oh I said yeah, it's good that I keep going between things just so I don't I'll never be consistent with myself yep yep it's see that's just that's not really an export see uh, CSV is going to do it. It's not. It's not. This isn't going to work either. But we want to fail in every possible way. Yeah, oh, cool. It's graphics, but it's got a comma after it, so that's what makes it a <laughs> CSV. Um, so again, I'm guessing with the exception of SVG, which doesn't work, it's not going to let us... Yeah, I can't do that. GIF we already tried, JPEG, and that's actually just JPEG. Okay, you cannot infer the format. Well, there, now you can fail. PBM, PCX. PGM, I, I don't even know why I'm bothering. PNG. Now I forgot what the export formats were. Um, PPM, no, I don't think so. And let's see if TIFF works. It, it won't, but okay. All right. So really we can export it to S broken SVG. That that's that's some that's some powerful shit there. Um. So we we really do have this. It's pretty bad. Um. We can create graphics. Uh. We can. How do we export an image? I think we managed to export an image. Um. Yes, we did. We did. Um, I don't remember how now. <laughs> Boy, I probably should have written that down. Um, colorized table print, so, um, no, I guess we, I guess we just took graphics and, um, well, let's take a look at M2 again. What the hell did we do? M2 is, um, our colorized prime table here. And did we do an export on it? We did, we did, didn't we? Okay. Um, so M2, because we built it out of colorize, we could export that, which is nice. But I think the problem is it took forever to do this. Um, let's remember. <sighs> and that's not a big image, that's a, like a 10,000 pixel image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that really took way too long. All right. So, in theory, if we were to work enough, we probably could make it so that we could create graphics, export them, and hopefully most of what we put into the graphics would come out correctly. Uh, we have density plots. Well, that's actually maybe... Th you see how terrible I am about this? I'm going to keep kind of letting it do what it wants without actually... Uh, without actually, you know, giving up on Mathematica. So we can do density plot, uh, which they seem to think is the same thing as a, um, as a contour, kind of like a contour plot. So very simple function here. Let's do this. Graphics. So if I actually wanted to use it from the command line, I can't, I can't show these graphics because there's, there's nothing external to this. Um, and I also can't do this because that'll break. Ta-da. I did that on purpose. I broke it on purpose. Um, oh, geez, and I didn't even bother to write down. Didn't, it's not hard to do this, but x plus y, x goes from negative 5 to positive 5, y goes from negative 5 to positive 5. And hopefully it's smart enough to do the, the, the scaling itself. I don't know why I said that. It probably isn't. And then I could export um, the, the previous thing. Export to temp image dot do, 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 SVG percent. And it will let me do that. And then, it, it won't work, but I mean, image.svg we can go to, 
and it's broken, but the cool thing is we could probably unbreak it. Um, I hope this isn't the same, no it's not, it's a density graph. So we can unbreak it by going here, getting rid of this, doing this, mine, mine decoding. <laughs> yeah, we, we really, these guys really suck balls. Um, converting it, oh, okay. And again, it's actually not even valid because when we come over here, um, they're missing part of the end. Oh, they're missing the whole SVG tag this time. Why the hell not? Yeah. See, so it is an image. So now it's presumably a valid S a VG file, and now presumably I can display it. That is a gorgeous looking contour plot. That was sarcasm. Um, mesh gradient. Now there are other programs that will display uh, uh, SVGs better. Inkscape might be one of them. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, it might be that the view box is broken here. Mesh gradient, and we don't have a, we don't have a size and a width, of course, because that would be <laughs> far too easy. Um, a bunch of polygons here. And I guess what bugs me is the view box here is like really, really tiny. It's, well, it's not actually. Um, and I don't know if this is XX, YY, or X, bottom, top left, um, uh, bottom right, whatever. Let's mess with it. Um, I also know I'm meaning 350 out of X plus Y between 1 and negative 5 and 5. But let's do this. This will give us something. Well, actually, it won't, but I mean... Well, that changed things, but not in a good way. So, let's see. What, what are the polygons being drawn here? Is there, let's see, this, we should be seeing these suckers. Um, let's see what this does. Yeah, screw this. All right. This is brilliantly flawed, and I mean that in a very literal sense, like diamond being, you know, brilliantly but flawed. So apparently we can only um, export graphics sometime, which is not good enough for us. Um, let's see if anyone managed to hang on to the chat all this time, uh, except for Commander Root and Lurks, so who I'm pretty sure don't really exist. Uh, no one has. Okay, so now we're going to do something interesting now that we've lost all our viewers that we never had to begin with. Um, the problem I asked, we've asked before, is um, we know how to compute the separation data between one point uh, and you know two objects. So we're going back, going back to this diagram. Um, if you're here, we can tell you. I can tell you the separation data, which is you know basically the angular radii. Um, I'm going to say radiuses, angular radiuses, and the uh, the separation between the two centers. We can use that data to see how big of an eclipse there is. The problem, of course, is we can't do it on the surface of the planet. We can, um, but it's uh, we have to basically look at each point on the surface or something of that nature. Um, so well, I was trying to avoid um, I was trying to avoid doing that. Um, and I, I mean, there's not going to be a way to do it. This is it's just I mean, an ugly function here that basically um, yeah, the perp vector. <laughs> it's funny because it said perp. Um, the perpendicular vector here uh, is uh, is you know made an a attempt to do that, but we did this in sort of an actually sorry not the perp vector the uh, min corner eclipse. Uh, made an attempt to do this by, uh, you know, cheating a little bit by using the same SPOS vector, adding perp to it, then subtracting twice perp to it, so it's now negative perp. This is, of course, not going to work in a general case here. We don't, we don't want that. Um, so, 
so what we do, we're going to create something that's going to give us the um, the eclipse factor. I hope to hell it doesn't take forever because this could be ugly. Uh, and right now we're just going to sort of hack it and write it as um, just checking to see that it hasn't changed. Hack it and write it as like you know with fixed uh, coordinates, like 180 degrees, uh, 90 degrees, whatever. Um, but then we we might need to get we might need to have parameters you know exactly which lat latitudes and longitudes you want how fine of a gr grid do you want and I'm really doing this not because I want to use it long term but I want to see if we can find patterns or you know some sort of proof that the maximum eclipse occurs at a certain point minimum eclipse occurs at a certain point again an other issue is going to be that we only want to be looking on the side of the planet that is uh, lit by the sun uh, the dark side of the planet doesn't matter if the sun's eclipsed. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not even sure. I, well, I'm going to go ahead and document this kind of. Uh, not not super great documentation here. Um, what are we going to be given here? It's very much like, uh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. That is clever. Yes. I think I can do this in a more clever way. Instead of being given the vectors and stuff, I think I'll take what Min Corner Eclipse takes. And um, that actually could be really useful. Um, yeah. So given a time, the sun, the eclipsing object, and the eclipsed object as Io, I'm almost tempted to tweak Min Corner Eclipse. We might want to get rid of it entirely at some point. Returns. Or Retrons. Uh oh, Rorge. Um, and actually, I might just have it print for right now because um, returning would be a real pain. So we're just going to say prints. Prints. The value of the eclipse at various points on the surface of Q. Booyah. Okay, I'm actually happy about that. I'm actually quite happy. And uh, this is actually not returning anything. Um, and actually, printing is going to be a lot easier than returning, because returning is going to return a huge freaking array. Um, and since we're only using it to you know, get some mathematical information from it, printing is actually a reasonable option here. Uh, what are we going to call this? Um, eclipse. <laughs> Around the world, the trip big Rome if you want to roam around the world. Okay, goddamn, that was way too much singing. Fortunately, the uh, lyric, uh, the uh, singing catcher won't catch it because my voice is horrible. All right, I think we're gonna copy some of this code here um, because a lot of this we're gonna need anyway. So let's copy from here. Um, that's not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Um, escape, uh, at sign. Okay, so here, this just gives us the problem. Yo mama. All right. I think this is what we need. I don't know if we'll use all those variables, but C will tell us if we don't. Okay. So, blah, 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 blah. We compute the, the braid eye. We complete the blah, blah. I'm going to take a short break to uh, of one second to fix my tongue. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Done. Okay, so now um, now we're going sort of a loop here. Oh, this is... I'm going to regret this. But and it is going to be a double. We do want to... And it, it, the, the, what I'm going to regret is putting this... Um, Can I actually nest the... That might not work, actually. Well, we'll see. I'm going to regret putting these in degrees. I mean, I'm going to regret a lot more things, but I'm going to regret putting these in degrees is what I was worried about, because, um, of course, we're really... These are all radians, really. Okay. So now, what we need to do is we need to create... We need to figure out um, the vectors from this latitude and longitude, which, of course, will be uh, based on... Uh, wherever the hell I S pause and T pause, uh, so, and we don't need perp here. So, and I don't think we need either of those. And so, 
just random thinking that's very bad for a programmer, but you know, I do it because I'm a bad programmer. Okay, so we have all this stuff, and I, we're going to need like a temp variable here, and I don't think there's a way around that. Um, I think we're going to need two temp vari 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 two temporary vectors here, which are also variables, variables that hold vectors. I might be losing my freaking mind. Okay. So now we need to create the uh, the pause vector, and in this case, I think we're going to use the uh, addition and subtraction functions. Um, let's see. We need to figure out the spherical to x y z coordinates here of uh, latitude and longitude, and I think I've written a function that already does that. And I'm I, I immediately am thinking I'm wrong about that too. Um, because it's, it's not really a very, it's not a clean function, it's a pretty ugly function. Um, oh, you know what, they've written a function that does that, that's why I, I don't, uh, all right, let's see if we can find the c-spice slide, so we're, we're done with mathx, screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it, I can't screw this because it would, it would close the whole thing, but let's find my spice, um, documentation, okie dokie, um, spherical to, Oh, they actually use two. Um, rec spherical. Oh, they, they're just going to say SPH rec. Okay, spherical to rectangular coordinates. Don't really need to use it, but I will. Um, oh, and then the nice thing is it'll stuff it inside of the vector for me. Um, so the radius here is just going to be QR. Spherical to rectangular coordinates C, the radius of R. Now, they are stupid because they use the colat, because uh, they're stupid. I know I said that twice. Um, so that's going to be 90 minus latitude, but that is in degrees, so we want um, radians per degree. Times the number of degrees gives us radians, which is the only thing that really works. RPDC times Yes, I use longitude, and then it'll come out in, oh crap, um, this is just creating the vector, we don't actually have the subtraction yet, and unfortunately, because of the way we do things here, uh, we cannot, um, see, in a regular programming language, in a good programming language, we could pass the result of this conversion directly into vector add or subtract, but because, um, because this re returns a result in a in a variable, we actually have to we have to put a second command in here. So this we're just doing Q temp. So now we have Q temp as a um, yeah, it'd be good if we defined R. That's the radius of Q. Um, so now we have Q temp as the vector that reaches from the center, which is the origin, to a point on the surface. Now we need to subtract. Um, it actually doesn't matter how I do this, I don't think. Let's see if I got a V sub in there somewhere. Uh, so I remember the function. That didn't super help, but okay. Um, so we're going to take uh, the position S pause, which is, which is the position of S. And we're going to subtract off Q temp, which we just created. And we're going to put the result into S temp. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for T. Now, um, we do, the, the order in which we subtract is, uh, screw it, I'm going to pretend the order in which we subtract isn't, isn't relevant. I mean, it's just going to be the negative of the other, but it might be relevant, so I'm not going to say that. So do we have T temp, or am I calling this something else? S temp, V temp, what the hell is V? I've lost my freaking mind. Um, S, T, and Q. That's T temp. I don't know where the hell V came from. All right, Q temp, and let's put this in T temp. So now we have the two vectors um, of to S and T from the surface. Now, here's where, here, now we actually do the work. Um, not min corn eclipse. What's the other one I have? Void star, perp vector, no. Separation data. Oh, that only returns a value. Okay, cool. So we have, we'll just call that 
Um, are we using, we are using like travel time. Um, so we'll just call that septat data. Just do that. Okay. So set data equals separation data. Um, S temp SR hasn't changed. I want to make sure we actually computed it here. We did. Okay. Um, T temp, the new value of T, radius of T hasn't changed. And I guess we don't even need anything else because everything else has been computed for us. Awesome. And now we make people very sad by doing this. Latitude and longitude separation data return. And then close off our for loop, close off our other for loop, close off the function. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay. Um, now I think we're using VC occultations as our current thingamabob. Um, okay, we've got to be a little bit careful here. Um, because we actually give up our knowledge of the position. Oh, actually, no, we don't. Because we, we were using NAFE IDs, we can actually do this now. Um, yeah, this is good stuff, but let's temper... Well, you know what, let's not, actually. Um, so now we can send... Because we're only using the, the, the planetary... We, were not, we don't have to know the position because it'll compute it. I'm worried this is inefficient, but in C, even inefficient is pretty good. So let's see what Eclipse around. <laughs> I want to sing that song now, although I've learned that the word gypsy is apparently offensive to Romani people. Um, that could be wrong. Someone might have just told me that. So Eclipse around the world, ET, and then whatever we're calling our three objects here, which I think is a uh, moon ID, sun ID, and then uh, this should be in the correct order, I think. God damn it. Is it the moon? Yes, it is. It is. The uh, planet's going to, the sun's going to eclipse, the sun's going to cast a shadow on the planet. The sun is going to hit the planet and cast shadow upon the moon. Awesome, man. So this will tell us when we actually have an eclipse, what the eclipse looks like around the world. Or it won't. I want to hedge my bets there. But let's see if we can actually make it do what we want it to do. Yeah, and again, because I was in this directory earlier, I need to get back into it because I broke the SSH HFS chain. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Is sphere C incompatible type for argument one QR? Okay, that's kind of weird. Did I call it something else? Um. Mm. Yep, I did it. Oops, I did it again. QR zero because we are actually. Um, where the hell does that come up again, though? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Why? Okay, wait. What? Let me look at this again. And again, yes, there it is. We actually do use uh, the zero values. I don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Very clever. QR0, RPTC, QTemp, SPAS, STemp, SR0, and TR0. And I kind of want to create new variables for that, but I, not really. Um, and I'm guessing you cannot redefine a variable to be different. This is C. It's very strict about variable typing. So I don't think we can even redefine SR and TR to be, um, to be doubles instead of arrays of doubles. Occultations, uh, ET, phone home. Uh, each and every, okay, so let's, and I think in this case that's just because I meant to say beg. Uh, oh. Okay, actually, we want to see, this is not necessarily the middle of the eclipse because it doesn't work that way, but this is roughly at the middle time of the eclipse, not at the greatest time of eclipse. But again, we're using this for, uh, I even forget what we're using it for, I don't care anymore. Um... We're just using this for to see if we can find any pet. Awesome! So now we should be able to do this. And... Um... Yeah. Groovy. No. And... I actually have a thing that lets me turn off debugging and stuff using, um... 
using a debug environment variable. Um, I don't use it though, so really not very helpful. All right, we don't want all those. We just want our printfs now. And I don't think removing those things should have made it. Um, oh crap! Again, I always forget. And I and I looked at uh, BC sudo make to see if I could make it easier for it to do it with BC libh, but it, I can't. Um, I mean, I can't. You might be able to. Okay, awesome. Uh, we've completely broken it now. Um, so let's see. Unless we were looking at something that can't happen. Yeah, I think that we were. I think we just wanted to get the radius or something at one point. So we'll flip it. We should have something now. Ooh. Shiny? This is a very non-eclipsed view here. Dude. Um... Of course, I'm also... Yeah. And as I kind of thought, I really don't want to print it every one degree. Which is why earlier I was actually going to change this plus plus into a plus equals, because I knew it. I didn't really want to keep it at, uh, at 1. The plus plus happens to be like a, a... Really kind of a kludge if you're just doing plus equals 1. It's kind of a bad thing, actually. Um... Yeah, I said it. I said plus plus is a bad thing. All right, now let's do this. 317, 317. Okay, now it's not looking too good because we would expect these values to be much lower. Um, and some of them should be freaking negative at least. That's uh, not looking too good. I might have multiplied it mistakenly, but it still should be negative. You can't sort of change negativity. Um, and last three values are just... Okay. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Um, let's go ahead, eclipse around the world. So we know where it's coming from, but this, um, latitude and longitude are looking good because they're, they're what we want. Set data equals separation data. That's uh, temp. SR0, T temp, TR0. Um, that looks correct. Am I sending it in the wrong order? I mean, it's, it's the exact same order, though. I mean, this almost mirrors uh, Eclipse Corner, which presumably does work. And, nope, I'm, I'm sending it as pause, so I mean, that's not... I mean, the only thing I'm worried about is maybe that somehow... S temp, but S temp is being reset every time. That should not be uncool. Okay, well, when in doubt... Let's put this whole thing to, and we're gonna call it file one, because that's the most useless possible name. Let's see what the values actually do go from and to. We're going to sort by the third column numerically. K3N. And maybe it really gets low. We just didn't, we're too lazy. Yeah, from 315 to 370. Not what I would call a great looking eclipse. Um. Yeah, not what I would call great looking eclipse there. Uh, alrighty. Um, we did get ET passed in as a... Yep, we did get ET passed in as a variable. Uh, we got the int passed in. Um, yeah, we, we are using ET. We're not even using Unix time here. All right, let me do something just in case this is doing something stupid. <coughs> oh. Oh, right, because I had to do a touch on it. Let's do it from the beginning time. In the beginning time. And see if that's any better. 
just in case something weird is no, it's not looking good at all. 317, 320. The separation data is insanely huge. I mean, this is effectively saying that. Um, yeah, this is effectively saying that the. Um, it's not even close to an eclipse. All right, so let's go ahead and do this again. This time, I'm going to look at the what the instructions actually are, because every so often you want to do that. Um, let's make Io the moon. The sun still gets to be the sun. Jupiter the planet, and we'll go from 2020 to 2021 because it's almost 2020. Dun 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 dun. What's weird is it's not only uh, still wrong, but it's very similar values. Like someone's added 300. Oh, that was pretty low, 289. Someone added something to it. So uh, maybe, and this may be where I really, no, hang on, I'm not even using a uh, corner. Yep, 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 yep. Hello, person who just came into chat. Uh, hello, Milkister Moo. Uh, and uh, you're asking about the other person in chat. Um, Lurks and Commander Root, I'm pretty sure, are not real people. I think everyone, they just, for some reason, lurk in channels, they gain something out of it, but I'm pretty sure they're not real people. But nice to see you. How's it going? And so, once again, you can get to solve my problem. In fact, I should probably just call you in at the beginning of each stream, um, and I'll, I'll print your name here, so it's, whoa, 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 that's not what I meant to do. That's also not what I meant to do. Um... Milk is Termu. This guy, follow him. Okay, he's not a Unix command though. Okay. Um, so today what's going on here is, so what we're trying to do here, let's go back to what we're doing. Um, we're curious as to why this eclipse around the world function isn't giving the proper separation data. And we're gonna debug it like the way we debug everything. Um, so we have S-pause, T-pause. Yeah. So let's go ahead and... Um, no, we're not going to have a choice. We're going to have to do this. We're going to say printf S-pause duh 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 And then we're going to print the modified value, the value, and we're, we're going to do it after it's assigned, I think. Maybe that'll be a little bit nicer. Um, And it might be I'm doing the, if I'm doing the subtraction really badly, this might, oh, this might be the problem, that I'm doing the subtraction so badly that I'm getting, like, the total negative or something. And so S temp, after we've sort of done this little, Q temp should be very small. It only has a radius of QR0, which should be tiny. But you never know. Maybe I'll make a shortcut function that just prints three-dimensional arrays. Okay, and once again, we have to do a touch. I think we can actually do a touch make file and it'll still, it'll try to redo everything. Um, for some weird reason that should work. I mean, I, it's because I think that's actually one of the things that's actually in there. Uh, no, apparently it isn't. Um, I th okay. S temp. Um, kind of nice to print out S too, huh? S temp. Let's just. Oh, did I forget? Did I forget to print out? I'm an idiot. I meant to print out S and S temp, of course, not just one or the other. Uh, S pause. Sorry, S pause. S uh, is just the uh, the naif ID. S pause is its position. Yeah, I can always do create a function there. All right. So we're going to do touch. And, you know, maybe we'll just make this like a thing now. Um, seems to be okay. Yeah, see, that's not really that, that's not really that far from, from S temp. I mean, that, those numbers, it's kind of weird that it's going, oh, I think because of the way of using latitude and longitude. So that really, um, that's not really a big change. S pause, S temp, the signs are the same. Um, okay. 
Now, wait a minute. Yep, I'm starting to see some problems here. So STEP is getting really, really freaking far away from SPAS as the program runs. Um, and then it gets closer again, but I mean, that that's like a good 29,000 kilometers out, and I don't think IO's that big. So the problem I might be having here is that... Um, that doesn't really make sense, though. This should stab something into S temp fresh and new. It shouldn't change the value of S temp. It certainly shouldn't change the value of S pause. Let's take a look at the V sub. Maybe now we'll actually read the instructions. Now that we've left things up th this badly. Vector subtraction, three dimensions. There's no reason. Cont spice double, cont spice double. This is, this is the only sort of weird thing here is we're not giving it. We're giving the spice double array, not a cont spice double array, and. God, I hope it's not so stupid that it actually changes um, what it's given as an input. I mean, that would be just freaking ridiculous. All right. So S pause, I think, is remaining fairly constant, which is which is good. Uh, S temp is going kind of crazy to the point where it doesn't even look like it. So let's see what Q temp is. I guess that's what are we adding and subtracting to it? Um, QR zero RPD. Into Q temp. Let's see. There's nothing wrong there. Nothing is wrong. Everything's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see what's what we're adding, subtracting to this, and somewhere I think uh, I was a tiny frickin' moon. Okay. Um. I did not realize that Io was 71,000 kilometers in diameter, which seems ridiculous. That seems like the size of Jupiter, actually. Um, so I think I'm doing this wrong, obviously, is, is the issue. Uh, and I don't even remember what I mean by moon, sun, and planet anymore, I think, is the problem, is one of the problems. Okay. Uh, the moon... is the thing that's being occulted. Am I sending these parameters in wrong? I shouldn't be. Alright, let's take a quick look here. Let's see how we've bothered to define stuff now that we've completely confused ourselves. Um... And we're still using min corner eclipse, which we're going to abandon, but that's just to find the times. Uh, what have I done wrong here? So, in a way, it was nice that I got rid of the um, words eclipsing. Uh, we're we're going to look at BC obscurations, because, but now I forgot which one is supposed to be the, the thing that gets eclipsed. Um, I suck. Um, the observer, the obscured, so the observer is the moon. Aha. Um, the sun is the obscured object, and the obscuring object is Jupiter. So, so this should be 501. Yep. That's exactly okay. Just do this. BC occultations 501. Sun is being the thing that's being obscured. 599 is the thing that's doing the obscuring. Let's hang on. Let's see. Yeah, Jupiter is doing the obscuring. That's all good. Um. Okay, so we are thinking Q temp is being weird. So what is Q temp? What are we sending in as the third argument? The third argument we're sending in is observer ID. No, I'm sorry, this is the wrong program. Let's go back to this one. Um, okay. So we're setting a moon, sun, planet. Maybe I've got the order wrong. I don't think so. <sighs> um. Okay, wait. Uh, 
I am sending these in the wrong order. Awesome. Um, the light generating object is S. The eclipsing object is T and the eclipsed object. So these are being sent in the wrong order. So let's go ahead and do this. Maybe sending them in the right order would help, huh? And it's also good that I changed the order to confuse myself a little bit there. Um, and I guess this will be for the same comments will apply here. So let's take a quick look at this. A light generating object, which would be the sun. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Um, an eclipsing object, which will be the planet and the, wait, 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 um, which will be the planet ID and the thing being eclipsed, which is the moon. So I'm almost wondering now if I f this up on the other, um, oh no, I do send them in the correct order here, which is why we're at least getting close to being the eclipses. Uh, but now let's, let's go ahead and go back to this. Um, BC occultations. Obscuration 3 made itself too. We're not using it, but. Okay. Let's booyah this sucker. S temp. That actually is a much more reasonable value for S temp. Um, looking good, looking good, looking good. I'm not really looking at them. But the, the, the Q temp seems small enough, and the S temp and the S pause are close to each other, which we expect. So we're happy. And then, um,. Yeah, we don't need to print S temp. We don't need to print these, so we do want to print now uh, the actual value, the obscuration value, which will hopefully be closer to zero or negative one now. Let's see what happens. Okay. Dun 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 dun. Oh, cool. Um, nice. I mean you know, useless to us right now, but, but nice. These values are at least negative, uh, which we would expect. Good stuff. Uh, and now let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and make it, um, I'll never remember the order. And I'll probably just change it for fun. Um, let's make it so that the moon is the observing object. I really, really need to be clear about that. Hang on. I'm going to change the uh, BC occultations to say um, because now I've gotten a little bit too crazy with, with what, what I mean here. Okay, yes, 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 I touched it, you. Uh, moon equal observer. Sun equal shiny thing. Planet equal blocky thing. That should be close enough for me to understand what I'm doing. So what if we're observing from the Earth, the Sun, being blocked by the moon. So this is going to be, um, this is going to be total, this is going to be solar eclipses, which in theory shouldn't work at all for the year 2020, uh, because in theory there are, uh, there are no eclipses. I mean, oh, see, that's what's weird. Um, according to, oh, right, right, these, because I'm using a weird thing to check them. Um, so apparently, yes, there is an eclipse, uh, Fairly total, fairly nice total eclipse here. Um, around the whole freaking planet, which doesn't make sense because you can't have that kind of an eclipse. Oh, oh hang on, hang, hang, oh, 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 okay. It looks like uh, the eclipse doesn't go all over the planet, which is nice. Um, let's see. Okay, so we're starting to see here, at, uh, oh, it might be for the southern half of the planet. Uh, because now we're going into sort of uh, more positive latitudes. Nope, still pretty darn eclipsed. Um, yeah, that's, so there looks like there's a partial eclipse everywhere, which again is not realistic. Um, there should be some point where there's no eclipse at all. So um, whatever the hell I'm doing here, I'm not doing it correctly. Yeah, something, something is not quite right. Um, something is quite wrong. Okay, we have been streaming now for... And you know when I say that, it's just because I'm going to be quitting. Unless something happens. About an hour and a half. Um, if anyone in chat wants to say anything in the next couple of seconds, I can, I can continue. We will continue later with this. I think this is a minor glitch. Um, either that or if 
flip the parameters, I've done something else that's stupid. Uh, and yes, I have done something incorrect. Um, if the moon is the, uh, the sorry, it's the Earth, isn't it? Yeah, no, that that should be fine. No, I've got this backwards. This is the Earth. This is the freaking moon. Unfortunately, I don't think this thing is going to ever give us an eclipse that hits both two edges of the planet at the same time. I just don't think those sort of eclipses occur. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. La 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 la. Okay. I think we're going to quit the stream. We're going to, uh, yeah, quit the stream now. But when we come back, um, now I really, really don't want to do this for multiple reasons, but in theory, at least as a test, we can look at the minimum value that the separation data takes on, which is, this is a grid, and this is not a complete grid, and only print out values when the minimum value is, and I realize we'll have to, you know, unfold this loop, uh, and only print out values if the minimum value is like less than negative one, meaning there's a solar eclipse somewhere on the planet that is within, and that occurs within a, like a five degree hop somewhere. Uh, and again, the goal of this is just to try to figure out if we can find a way to compute the maximum and minimum eclipse without having to look at every point, because this is this is not that inefficient. But if I made this like 0 0.01, that would be really inefficient, and that would be really bad. And there should be a way to uh, to interpolate where the maximum is. All right, thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now.